This is the mighty Byzantine Empire, a purple phoenix risen from the dead. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I did it. Let's go. This is the Kingdom of Greece. Not a great place to be, but I will show you in this video how the Kingdom of Greece can become glorious Byzantium once again. It's not even all that difficult. Iron Man mode is on, historical focuses are on, and yes, the game thinks I'm cheating. I'm not cheating, I'm running a mod currently that just adds a name list for the channel members so my divisions can be named after channel members. That's it. If you want to be named as well, well, consider signing up. Let's go. Before we get going, I want to say this strategy was inspired by Snoop Predictions over on Reddit. I'll leave a link down to his original post down in the description below. But let's get cracking. Decisions, we're going to put the king under house arrest. We don't need him interfering. There we go. Then research. Of course, we start with the basics of engineering, construction, and production. There we go. Construction. Let's start with a couple of sieves in Attica. Two should be able to build that at least. We'll take the entire army. Let's park these boys on Athens. There's nothing they really have to do for now. As for our dockyards, let's build... Let's build a Hydra. A single one of these early destroyers will do. After that, we'll be able to build better destroyers. As for focuses, we are going to devalue the Drachma. We have a very poor economy. We're gonna probably make it worse before it gets better. So Greece, not in a great place. <laughs> we have so much debt. It's like the Greek national pastime is to collect debt uh, for a monopoly. So overall, not great. But we're going to turn Greece into an economic powerhouse. Perhaps even the bedrock of Balkan financial stability. <laughs> Ah, Greece, a nation of culture, art, fine food, truly a magnificent place. Which is why I'm excited to partner with today's sponsor, Rise of Kingdoms, to highlight their newest edition, Greece. Immerse yourself in Rise of Kingdoms, a strategy game with an immersive journey through eras of history. Whether you're a fan of PC gaming or enjoy the convenience of playing on your phone, Rise of Kingdoms is there for you to explore a multitude of civilizations. Join a vibrant global community of strategic minds, connect with millions of players worldwide and form alliances that will stand against all others. Now experience the thrill of real-time battles where every move counts and engage in exciting conflicts that unfold right before your eyes. Be there for your allies in times of need or launch a tactical counterattack when your enemies least expect it. Whether it's the Grand Ark of Osiris or other challenging endeavors, a victory will be the fruit of your teamwork. You can create a city that mirrors your vision and aspirations. You can customize every detail from majestic landmarks to intricate architectural elements such as the magnificent Greek style. Your city will be a true reflection of your unique style with exclusive commanders and special units based on your chosen civilization like these Greek boys. You can participate in the multi-civilization event as well via rok.games on screen right now to win special prizes like an Apple Vision Pro. Spicy. Download Rise of Kingdoms by scanning the QR code on screen or click the link down below and use promo code GREASE for ROK for 20 silver keys for new players. Gonna take the entire fleet, don't combine them, you wanna separate off the submarines from the surface fleet and just have them exercise until you have roughly 50 naval experience because we're gonna need that navy XP. And now we kick things off. There is a large element of RNG to this, but I'll show you what the big element is when it becomes relevant. It's something you as the player have zero control over, it just happens or it doesn't. Hey, the Venezuelists win the election and now we can talk about it. Here's the man himself, Elifte. Venizelos, really great leader, like the best leader Greece can probably get. Everything about him is great except for one thing, he can die at any moment. And I do mean literally any moment. It's possible to unpause the game and have him die. And it's also possible to have him live well into the 40s. You never know ahead of time. It's completely random. If he dies, you'll have to consider for yourself, do you want to suffer through it with a subpar leader or do you want to restart? I would suggest restarting if it's still like 37 maybe even 38 because you've not really lost all that much effort just a bit of time if he dies but you've already one paid off your debt and two dealt with the communists more on that later don't worry i would suggest you just keep going so i'm not gonna restart i will suffer through whatever happens but yeah venizelos is the big rng element here let's keep going we are now going to force the farmers into factories pay back our debts in bulk and then hit greek autarky about those debts in bulk we want to pay off every single one of these debts because as Greeks, we have an inherent financial sense of responsibility. We want to pay our debts. Don't click the small debt repayments, click the large ones. Trust me, just start repaying them once you get uh, paying back our debts in bulk. We are going to spend our first batch of political power and we are going to hire Papandreou. 
Stability is great. Political power is great. The democracy support is eh. It's mostly irrelevant. Trust me, he's a good pick. And if you're about to run out of oil before you get the amount of experience you want, there's no harm in doing a little bit of trading. Something else we're gonna need to research is airplanes, specifically CAS. So I'm gonna work on the small airframes, the bombs, the LMG, well, the light machine gun, so I can get the survivability studies and of course the engines. First off though, might be worth dipping down into mechanical computing. It's a bit long but 4% research speed can be significant. You don't have to do this though. I, I would say it might even be better to just go straight for the airplanes, but I'm gonna take the 230 days. So we're gonna hold on to our political power. We're gonna need it in a bit. And I know what you're thinking. I always personally go for open foreign subsidized factories, utilizing our strengths first. Yes, it's strong, it's powerful, but there is one big problem with these. This focus adds military factories and uh, like a mill and a sieve, great. So that's... One, two, three, four, four saves, four mills. Fantastic. However, it simply adds them in our provinces and that's it. They don't give us an extra building slot, meaning our provinces get filled up very quickly. And once they're full, that's it, you're done. This leads into this one, the bedrock of Balkan financial stability. This gives us a potential 12, you hear me? A potential 12 civilian factories, not just civilian factories that get added to your country. They are off map civilian factories. Even if the entirety of Greece is occupied, you will have those 12 civilian factories, meaning they don't take up build slots, meaning you have so much more room to do things, which is why I want to thank Snoop Predictions, because I hadn't considered that. That's a good eye he has. As for research, we want to keep our industry up to date. Engineering, we mainly want to get radios, maybe the mechanical computing. We want to focus on getting CAS, keeping guns up to date and keeping artillery up to date. Anything extra is extra and not really the focus of our research. If we get these slots later on and we have a little bit of leeway, Feel free to pick whatever you want. I am going to stick to the basics of my industry. And while we get closer to war, then I'll focus on stuff like guns. For now, industry. Need a strong, powerful Greece. All right, we're ready to start repaying our debts in bulk. Let's also grab autarky. This is also great. Consumer goods go down, stability goes up, and limited exports. All things considering, pretty great. And we're going to start doing these large debt repayments. They just cost twice as much as the small ones. They have not even that much worse of a modifier they give you, but they just it takes a lot less time if you do it this way. Let's keep it uh, let's keep it simple. So we've paid our debt to the British by half, so we need to pick this twice for every country. Two large debt repayments for each country for a total of, let's see, that's 100, 200, 300 political power and we'll be done with our debts, which is gonna be great because these debts are killing us. All right, we also have sufficient naval XP. Let's put everybody in the port for now and we're gonna go into the officer corps here. We're gonna pick Spirit of the Navy and flexible contracts. It's cheap, it's easy, it's great. We're gonna go into our ship designer and we're gonna pick the Royal Hellenic Naval Shipyard because this is going to give us extremely cheap ships. Their range is gonna be horrible and the capital ships aren't gonna be all that great, but they'll be cheap and we'll be able to build a lot of them. We can always switch out later for the other one once we wanna start building actual big boats. Till then, cheap ships will have to do. Speaking of cheap ships, we're almost done with that destroyer. We're gonna build new destroyers to uh, follow that up with. We're gonna design a new 1936 destroyer. It doesn't have to be fancy. What I like to do is add a gun, fire control, torpedoes, best engine I can fit, and this is it. it it's not world changing, it's not the greatest ship in the world, but it will do. It has to get in the way of enemy torpedoes and that's what it's going to do. And we're gonna build as many of them as we can for now because we will need a little bit of naval superiority to save our shores. While we're looking at the production queue here, let's also switch that up so we can be ready for the future. What I'm going to do here is add a little bit of support companies. So two support equipment, four, maybe five on guns, about three on artillery and everything we get after that, we're gonna add to cast. I'm gonna use transport planes like Snoop predictions did in his post to make it clear for you guys this is a placeholder the transports are a placeholder this will be cast so this is what your production is going to look like this is going to fill in as we build some of those delicious military factories now on to the national focuses mining operations good ish three mills not terrible tobacco industry however relations boost not that impressive but four extra sieves four sieves great four sieves will mean a booming industry. Let's also get a high command going here. 
Papagos can command and the general will be either one. Marcos Dracos isn't too bad and Katsi. <laughs> These guys have hilarious names. All right, tobacco industry expanded. We're going to use that to create an agency, mostly so we can keep an eye on Turkey. We're going to form the agency, put a spy in Turkey and then uh, upgrade the agency. We could mobilize the economy. It's what I would usually do. It gives us partial mobilization. It's not amazing, but usually by the time I got here, my economic laws would be early mob and then move into partial. I wouldn't do that now. Even if it gave us war economy, uh, we wouldn't be able to keep it up because of our war support being eh, very iffy. Encouraged tourism, however, is great. And trust me, trust me, let, let me walk you through it. One, consumer goods factories minus 5%. Fantastic. 5% extra stability. Fantastic. It also adds booming tourism industry, which is great in every single aspect, even if it's temporary. We lose it as soon as we go to war, but we will not go to war until 1939. So we have a full three years of extra political power, less consumer goods and more stability. This is just a win. All right, so we got our espionage agency. What we're going to grab here is economy or civilian intelligence. That's going to be the first one. And after that, we're going to work up until we can hire two spies. We need a total of five upgrades for that. I would recommend things like cryptology and radio interception so we can break some ciphers. These unfortunately named pills are also a good choice. Tourism encouraged. And now we have some choices. Clear the slums. Terrible. Yes, the manpower is nice as are the building slots, but overall, none of these are needed or even want it. Making use of our islands is good. If you want to play a naval game, it can be actually quite great. But I think we're going to go with rejuvenating Athens, a mill, two saves, four building slots, all in Attica. I think that's pretty great. Meanwhile, keep paying your debt because I forgot to click this button a few times, which is annoying. All right, Athens rejuvenated. Back up here, fiscal responsibility. That's what Greece is all about. Fiscal responsibility followed by the bedrock of financial stability. And with that last repayment to the Italians, we will be done. And here comes fiscal responsibility. Fantastic. Now we're going to move on to the big focus, the bedrock of Balkan financial stability. That's us. That is Greece in a nutshell. We're going to start that focus. We're going to keep the game paused for a little bit. We have things to do. We are going to improve our relations with pretty much everybody. We're going to go on a massive PR campaign. Improve it with Albania, Yugoslavia, Hungary. And these three, we're going to let the relations tick up to 65 so to give us some leeway. Then we're going to go to Turkey, Romania and Austria. I know they're not a Balkan country. Doesn't matter. Those three, we're going to let relations tick up to 90 again to give us some leeway. And then finally, Czechoslovakia. Again, I know it's not a Balkan country. We're going to improve relations up to 100. And we're going to keep an eye on that because currently we're bleeding political power. But that is our next move. We're going to improve those relations. It, it's big. It's very important. So once we hit about 65 in the first three, we're going to start canceling all these improved relations. Then the next three at 90, we're going to cancel those as well. That leaves us with just Czechoslovakia and they're at 100. We're going to cancel that as well. Now that should have our relations high enough with everybody by the time this focus finishes to give us the factories we so desperately need. Ooh, another spy. Let's put two spies in Turkey. What we're going to do here in Turkey is mostly infiltrate civilian administration. After that, just build a spy network to make them easier to invade. If we infiltrate their civilian administration, we will be able to see what focuses they're doing. And that is going to be important because you can see Turkey is currently guaranteed by Romania. Once Turkey does the focus reconfigure foreign policy or something along those lines, Romania drops the guarantee. Their next focus will pick up a guarantee from the UK and or Germany. So we have that 30 day window between their two focuses, 35 or 70 days, I have to lie, I'm not sure, where we can attack them with impunity. So we need to line up our focuses with theirs. So it's important that we can see what they're doing. And we're going to go ahead and crush the monarchists. Yes, it's going to hurt our stability, but that will recover. The important thing is it will improve our war support by a lot, which is important, even though it's very low right now. This man will not be around for much longer. All right, this is about to finish. Let's see here. We have 18, four from trade, 14 owned. So we own 14 factories, 14 sieves. Let's see what it becomes when this focus finishes. Bada bing, bada boom. We now own 26. I think that was a fair deal, don't you think? That was a fair fair deal. All those available factories are going to go straight into military factory productions. Build as many mills as humanly possible. For now, 
at least for now. We're going to be building a whole, lot, whole lot of mills. We're also going to now crack down on foreign monopolies because of course we are. Considering we have a fair amount of political power now, I could go with the improved worker conditions, but I think the anti-communist raids are going to be fine. If you can't do them because their support has dropped too low, by all means get improved worker conditions. You'll need the stability moving forward. Foreign monopolies are cracked down on. We're also going to hire an industrial concern here, Neorion, mainly because of the extra construction speed for military factories. That's fantastic. But all the other bonuses are also very nice. The additional political power we'll hold on to. We might have need for it in a bit. Also, good idea to get the cast designer. Faliron. It speeds up the research, of course, but also the extra ground attack is fantastic. But again, you need to have the political power available. This is one of those picks you can avoid if you don't have the PP. The other things are more important. This is a nice to have. I'm lucky because Venizelos is still here. You might not be. All right, we got the Academy of Athens and it's time to turn towards war. We're going to grab the Hellenic Armed Forces, the Hellenic Army, and the Hellenic Navy, and then we'll evaluate where we are. The extra research slot that just freed up, you could use it for the army stuff if you're behind. I'm going to use it for a nice, juicy little cruiser, because that is what was recommended to me. We're setting a lot of political power here. About time we start doing something about our economy. We're going to move up to partial mobilization. It's going to depend on the, your war support at this point. If Eleftherios Venezelos is dead by now, it's possible you're not quite at 25% war support. And in that case, you might have to, well, find war support elsewhere. All right, we got the Hellenic Army. Now for the Hellenic Navy. We got a nice amount of army experience, and we're going to use that. We're going to go into the Spirit of the Army and pick Relief of Command. More XP gain. Fantastic. But the Army Advisor cost is even better. That means we can get for instance, the army maneuver genius for half off. He does leave once we flip fascist, which is bad. But until he does, he gives us 0.4 daily army experience gain. So he is our next political power pick. He will allow us to refit our armies. Got those fancy new cruisers. Let's uh, design one. I like cruisers, even if they're not always the best. I just like heavy cruisers to add a little bit of uh, capital ship fighting capabilities. Plus, they're really great if you want to deny Turkey control of the seas. I'm not telling you to make this design. Absolutely not. I just felt like it. I have no idea what the optimal design for the ships is. All right. So I don't know. <laughs> I just feel like making this one. We're going to build a supply hub here at the outer point of Thrace. And for future wars, I would recommend building another one around here-ish. And of course, connecting them all up to your railway network. And that railway network also better be upgraded. Currently, it's level two and this fresh stuff is level one. Once we're past that point, we need to have these things at even higher levels than they are right now. But for now, we are still building mills. Let's also put in the cast I want. So add bomb locks, add more bomb locks, add the best engine possible, engine 2s, and if you have it, add armor plates. I haven't researched them yet, I'll get them eventually, but for now I can start making the unarmored version of my cast. Basic close air support. Let's hire Plastiras. Alright, we have the Hellenic Navy. Now we start the political side of things. We're gonna bring home the exiled Republicans, compromise with the monarchist, and take a straight shot down to resurrecting the Megali idea, followed by horror and fear. That's right. We're going to go to war. Now, as we get more and more military factories, there will be a point where we need to start trading for things simply because we're going to need to. I would recommend you do that. Uh, otherwise, your economy is going to go down to gutter. That is the downside of sticking to limited exports on the one hand and the Schacht plan on the other. We're going to send a lot of our stuff to, uh, to market. So that's unfortunate, but it is still better than the alternative. Look at the factories we have, though. We have so many factories available. Militarizing in rapid, rapid speed. All right. We got some exiled Republicans. Now we compromise with the monarchists. The commies are going to be hostile. The monarchists are going to be friendly. Fantastic. Now, since we do still have Venizelos, and I know I'm going to get more political power while I wait, I'm going to make an additional picket. I'm going to choose Pircal as my infantry equipment designer. Again, this is a nice to have, but not needed for the guide. I'm going to pick it now because I know it's going to be beneficial to me and I can afford it. You don't have to. Same with the cast. You don't have to. All right, we've compromised with the monarchists. That means we can hire Metaxas. Perfect. This is our infantry division. We're going to keep this as our baseline unit. We might change it a bit, but for a normal frontline unit meant to hold a line, this is perfect. And we are going to duplicate this and create a more offensive version of this. And what we're going to do is simply add artillery. One, two, three, four. 
So a 30 width juicy thick boy. We're gonna add, of course, members to it. There we go. These will be the members. And we're gonna do the same with the mountaineers. We're gonna add one, two, three, four artillery. They're 28 width. I would very much like to add another set of mountaineers, but I cannot. So I'm just gonna add some infantry instead. Not as good, still okay. We can change that out to an actual mountaineer later on. It has to do with special forces cap, so don't worry about it too much. And then our cavalry, we're gonna take out the cavalry recon and add in support artillery. Now, how are we going to fill out our armies? We're gonna need about three mountaineers. Then we're gonna need about 10 of these uh, frontline units which we almost have. We're gonna train one more. We're gonna need about four of these shock troops that we just designed. There we go. All of these, of course, on high priority. And then we're gonna need roughly seven cavalry divisions. Uh, we have the one already. So let's just train six more. In terms of research, we're pretty much on track to get most of the things we want. We're making our airplanes, we're building our stuff, the factories are, are rolling out, we've even got something of a navy underway, everything is going fine. Unit recruitment is also underway. Manpower is going to be an issue, but we'll have time for that, don't worry too much about it. As soon as you finish, remember the Anatolian catastrophe, we're going to have fascism events. It doesn't really matter which you pick, I recommend strengthening the fascists at every turn unless the trade-off in these events would be too expensive. Some will give stability in exchange for war support and fascism support support, etc. Make the changes that you think your country can handle while boosting fascism support. Personally, I will side with them every time simply because I can afford to lose a little bit of stability to gain more war support and other bonuses. And we've also got all the horses deployed now. Everybody is exercising and we'll put them in their proper place in just a minute. All right, 250 political power. Time to... Oh. Oh, can't prevent the communist yet. I forgot, we need to flip first. So we're gonna hoard that political power, just gonna sit on it for a while. Don't need it for anything else. All right, we're building these two supply hubs and it's also time to reorganize the railway. This means supply hubs get built 300% speed. That is just a no brainer if you're building these, obviously do that. I am in love. <laughs> with superior firepower. I know, I know. And I'm going to hire Alexandros Papagos here. He's a little bit cheaper. I'm gonna spend a little bit of my army experience switching over to superior firepower. 1938 and Venizelos has finally passed away. It took him long enough. We are incredibly fortunate to have had him sticking around for so long. He has done us a great service. So we lose all of his perks, which is very, very unfortunate. Plus we lose 5% stability. This is the event that can happen day one, unironically, or it could happen somewhere in the 1940s. This was a very lucky run. We had him until 1938. His replacement's not terrible, but not nearly as great. We're going to take all of the Mountaineers and put them on the border here, along with all of our special boys, Artagmata. That makes seven divisions here, ready to storm towards Istanbul. Then we're going to take about four of these guys. We're going to park you on Samos. And, well, the rest of the islands here. So these two, well, it's actually easier. I hate having to draw an order here, so we're going to do it this way. Then we're going to take two divisions, put them on Mit Bitilin with a front line towards whatever the Turkish city is called here. We're going to put two units on Samos with a front line towards Izmir. That leaves us with a bunch of cavalry that will, for now, put in the back line somewhere near Thessaloniki, so they're not too much in the way. And of course, the standard infantry that remains. We'll put them behind the front of Alexandropolis just so the Turks don't feel too afraid. What do I mean by that? Well, if I put my full army on the front line here, the Turks will never attack me. If I put just the seven spearhead divisions there, the Turks will see seven divisions and think, I can take that. And they're gonna go and attack. When they attack, they lose their entrenchment, they lose their organization, I can easily counterattack. So that's what that is all about. And then negotiations. You wanna pick the top option. You make a coalition with the EEE, the fascists, they will become friendly, but it's gonna screw up the next focus, as intended. What do I mean by that? Well, you'll see in a bit. This resurrects the Megali idea. It's a long focus, but don't worry about it, we don't actually have to take it. We're gonna call a convention in and we're gonna invite all of the great powers the french the british and the italians you could pick the top option as well but we won't want the bottom option what that does is um because we're in a coalition with the fascists all those democratic powers don't really want to show up leaving us with just italy which is a bit embarrassing if only mussolini shows up 
So we're just gonna cancel it. That's that event gone. Now, as a result of that, the focus bypasses. Oh no. Well, guess we're on to horror and fear. In 60 days, we are going to declare war on Turkey. And Turkey has, well, 56 days to go before they cancel their guarantee. So I have a window of about four days there. Well, no, we have a fairly broad window. Anyway, as a result, our focuses line up perfectly to declare war on Turkey while they don't have anyone watching their backs. There we go. Because we screwed up the Megali idea and the convention, the fascists aren't happy. They launch a coup and either we fight them, terrible, not something you want to do, or we answer for our failures and give up. The Byzantine or the Byzantinist fascists will form a government. That is the option we want, baby. Bada bing. Bada boom, and this, um, I don't know, dick dastardly fellow is now in charge. He's not terrible. It's not great either. Fascist giving us access to extensive conscription. Yes, please. And war economy. Yes, please. He also gives us access to bada bing, bada boom, befriend the communists. And just like that, our country is in way better shape by the time we are ready to actually fight the Turks. Everybody is just about trained. Oh, right. Before we forget, we do lose relief of command. That gets replaced by accomplished heritage, which isn't great. So we're going to pick state serves the military for extra political power gain. I should have done that first, but I am a bit of an idiot. That would have given me cheaper extensive conscription, but it is what it is. Learn from my mistakes. So with war looming, let's take the Navy. We're going to stop the exercises, put everybody on strike force in the sea zone surrounding Greece so Turkey can't sneak in a naval invasion. One fun thing you could do is justify on Italy for one of their core states. If you t uh, justify for a core state, you don't lose the war goal. This gives you the opportunity and the option to take out Italy next alongside Germany, actually. So this is a little trick I like to play. But if you just want to reform Byzantium, you don't have to. But I... I think this is too funny not to. And there we go. Horror and fear finishes and we automatically declare war on Turkey. Now, Turkey sees weakness everywhere and starts attacking all of our units. Now, these guys on the islands are fine. The crossing bonus plus the entrenchment means these guys aren't going anywhere. The Turks might as well not be there. Here, they will be attacked from multiple sides. It's also fine. We're on a mountain across a river with air superiority, or at least air support up in a bit. We'll win this. We're going to slow the game down and keep an eye on this battle here. We're going to wait until the Turks finish attacking, and then we're going to create encirclements, destroy these units, and then fall back to the original position, or try another more funny method, which I'll show you in a minute. As for focuses, we just keep things flowing along here, reviving the double-headed eager, getting Federatoi, and then the Byzantine Themata. Meanwhile, stability and war support are looking a bit sad, though. They stopped attacking. First order, they're gonna cut down here and see if we can get to Istanbul. We'll put the other infantry on the front line as well, just so uh, there won't be any gaps in the line. These guys are going to keep moving. We're going to pin the guys in the port here so they don't get out. And as a result, we'll create a bit of an encirclement here. The main prize is down here, right beneath Alexandropolis. As long as we don't take that port, they will, and I, I promise you this, they will funnel units into there because they just can't help themselves, I guess. <laughs> and then again, we're going to hit Edirn and then just pull back whenever we've destroyed those units. Take it in, pull back. And we've taken Istanbul. That means a bunch of divisions destroyed. Another three divisions they will never see again. It should be down. Yeah, it should be down a lot. We're pushing across the strait here. Once we made it across, I think we should make it a priority to simply destroy the Turkish army. They haven't landed a division here in a while, so I'm going to pull away from here and focus on a new front line in Anatolia. And this is where we kill Turkey. The plan is to use the shock troops, so these mountaineers and these uh, artillery boys to create holes in the Turkish line. We use the horse boys to make small encirclements or big encirclements to capture supply hubs, to capture victory points, to snake our way and confuse the enemy AI. We are not going to be fighting them straight up in a fair fight. That is not our way. We came here to win, not to play nice. Circle and destroy and circle and destroy. And just like that, whatever was left of the Turkish army shrinks ever more. So I've finished justifying on Italy. Don't worry about it. It's a war goal that doesn't expire because it's a retake core. This war has taken about 79 days. We've destroyed most of the Turkish army, 250,000 casualties versus R18. They're down to at most 17 divisions. So encircle and destroy really is what you're aiming for here. Make wide encirclements, destroy their armies, just go around them. There goes Turkey. This is simple. We simply take their entire fleet, which isn't huge, 
and then we annex everything. Bada bing, bada boom, we have a nice, juicy National Union of Greece. And we can click the button, revive Byzantium, gain cores on all Greek and Turkish states, and move the capital to Constantinople. Let's click that. Beautiful. You can sit here and think, all right, we're done here. We can join the Axis, gobble up what we can in the Balkans, destroy the Soviet Union, grab our pound of flesh there and fight the Allies, and then turn around, stab the Axis in the back and take it all. Or we could go our own way, wait for the Axis and Allies to start slogging it out and then start taking stuff. Without joining a faction, just start attacking the Axis and taking stuff as the Alliance falls apart. The choice really is yours. I want to have a little bit of fun. I want to see if we can form all of Byzantium. And I do mean all of it. So we're going to go to the Byzantine Temata and see if we can restore the empire through all of its decisions. I'd say this country is looking better than it ever has. And there goes the massive peace deal and uh, well, we don't have the points we would have liked, but we're still in a respectable position. So what we're going to do is grab our cores and see from there. Overall, can't complain. Every single core we had, I was able to reclaim in some form or another. That includes even the Dodecanese Islands. We've got an Austrian puppet here to a flank my north. So we're, we're well and truly secured the north. Didn't take anything from the French. Maybe I should have. Didn't really get any cores here, so I didn't really care. And our next course of business, of course, will be a triumph for the Levant, which is going to be a little easier since I managed to take Tunisia and for Egypt. So I'm guessing a little bit of a North African campaign is in order. For that, we'll build up a couple of railways and uh, then it's off to the races. The Navy is in good shape. I managed to take what was left of the Italian and German navies. That should give us a nice amount of uh, staying power at sea. I think we might be able to control the North Sea. Sorry, the Mediterranean Sea. Right, so apparently I forgot to hit record because I'm some sort of jackass. Initial infantry push has gone well. So we uh, taken all of Iraq, essentially pushed down through the Levant all the way to the Suez Canal using the mechanized members. They've done well. Shock troops pushed right through and then we got stopped at the Suez. Problematic. I'm going to try and bypass it with a naval invasion, but it's going to be tough. I'm getting my cheeks clapped in North Africa. America can push through Tunisia has decimated my forces here, but I am holding, I'm, I'm trying to reconstitute my efforts. Air is a nightmare. Despite my early focus on air and continuously building air, the allies just overwhelm me. Nothing I can do to keep up. I have not nearly got enough rubber to do this. I'm trying to build more railways, trying to build more synthetics. I need a lot more synthetics just to be able to get a little bit of rubber going, but it's, it's probably too little too late. On the bright side, I only need Egypt and Tunis now. Egypt mostly, because the Levant is ours, at least. All right, I wasn't looking and disaster has struck terribly. I've been naval invaded by a whole lot of British. They're invading everywhere. I have pretty much no reserves, except for maybe if I get the mechanized to go back home. That's really my, my only option. I am not winning. I really assumed I'm just gonna walk in here and dictate terms to the allies. I am not winning. Well, I guess it's time to roll the mechanized in, try and contain this naval landing, then head on to the next one. Fortunately, every time I kill these British divisions, they'll, they'll stay down. We're not falling apart just yet, just mostly. 
not not entirely. I can contest some areas of the sky. 600 fighters against 3,000 enemy fighters. Wow, that's fantastic. That is amazing. All right, so a combined effort of the entire fleet and the Air Force have resulted in the naval invasion at least working. So hopefully we can land. Oh, more naval invasions. This one's going to be a bitch. Oh, this is really going to be annoying. Preliminary results, vaguely favorable. Meanwhile, I'm pushing in from Tobruk. So Alexandria is effectively encircled. Now we just destroy the units there. Good. The Navy is duking it out with the Royal Navy. <laughs> we're, we're not... Well, uh, let's just say I don't think we're going to win this one. So I would very much like to end this battle soon without losing my very precious ships. My screening efficiency is also way down. That's not good. I've lost a lot of destroyers, I'm thinking. All right, all right, all right. Okay, the Navy can bail. The Navy has to bail or it dies. <laughs> No! Go, 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 go. Leave. Leave. Okay, so what did that cost me? Eight bat eight destroyers, but I sunk a heavy... Okay, okay, so all in all, mostly favorable. Everybody back to port. All of the shock troops commit to a push down Egypt. Aggressively. Yes! Oh, we've linked up these... Levant front linked up. Okay, Operation Cleanup is underway. Everything is still possible. It is still possible. We've managed to push down Egypt far enough. We've not lost <laughs> Italy yet. My mechanized are on the way. I'll clean up eventually, but I've pushed down enough to push my triumph through. Egypt is now my core. We have done all the restore Byzantium decisions. And this is the Byzantine Empire at its greatest extent. We have cored all of this territory. We hold Italy, we hold North Africa, Egypt, the Levant, Anatolia, obviously, and the Balkan. We are still locked in a deadly struggle with the Allies, which I'm not sure I'm gonna win, because they will outproduce me in every department. But we have killed many, many of their troops. Look at the numbers here. They've lost 7.3 million men. I've lost almost half a million. And it's just naval invasion after naval invasion after naval invasion, mostly by the Americans. <laughs> Great job, America. That said, I think we're going to end the video here. It's been very hard fought. It went on a little longer than I would have liked. But I hope you guys have enjoyed the rebuilding of the Great Purple Phoenix. And I hope you'll enjoy this next video too. See ya. Download Rise of Kingdoms by scanning the QR code on screen or click the link down below and use promo code GREASE4ROK for 20 silver keys for new players.